Hello guys and welcome back to Engineering Hack, where we try to solve engineering problems in a way that's hopefully easy to understand. Today we're introducing the concept of exergy, which translates to the availability of energy. To be able to, you know, work problems and apply exergy, we need to understand the concept that energy has not only quantity, that is the number of joules or the number of calories we can calculate, but also has quality, right? Meaning that maybe not all joules are made equal. A joule of electricity may be uh, of higher quality than a joule of thermal energy, for instance. Okay, so the idea of exergy is availability from wherever the source you're looking at or the, um, the type of energy you're looking at all the way to what we call the dead state, which is the environment, the lowest possible um, state of energy that you have on a given system. So this problem reads like so. This is problem six point, uh, sorry, 8.16, and it reads like so. Consider a thermal reservoir at 1,500 Kelvin that can supply heat at a rate of 150,000 kilojoules per hour. A, determine the exergy of the supplied energy. Assume the environment temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. B, if the engine has a thermal efficiency of 50%, determine its second law efficiency. All right, so really there's nothing um, that's too new here in this problem or on the way we're going to use to solve it, all right? Think of the following. We have a thermal reservoir or hot reservoir at 1500 Kelvin, right? And Kelvin is great already in the unit of temperature that we need for this case. And then we have it supplying at a rate of 1500,000 kilojoules per hour. But then the hour is just the thing that we, you know, red flags go up here. We know that that's not in the SI, we need a um, we need it to be in watts, not per seconds, not per hours. So we can do that conversion. We need to watch out for that. So this guy is supplying some energy, and we know that we can, you know, through the use of a heat engine, we can take that energy being supplied and convert that into work, right? Into useful energy work. Okay, and that we also know that we need to send this energy, the energy that was not outputted as work, we need to send it somewhere. We need to reject it, right? We need to reject it to a cold sink, to a cold reservoir, all right? So in this case here, the cold reservoir is at 25 degrees Celsius, right? So 25, so this is another red flag. This is Celsius, not Kelvin, so we definitely want to do some unit conversion. So let's just put down what we know. This is 150,000 kilojoules per hour, and this is 25 degrees Celsius. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually going to just going to copy this, copy paste, and over here I'm going to do the equivalent just with the right, not the right unit, but just the, the units that are more appropriate so that we avoid any mistakes when we're solving these problems, right? So this is equivalent to, right, so 25 Celsius, we know that's 298 Kelvin. Okay, and this guy here, we can just convert it into, um, by noting that, by dividing by 3, 3600, right? And that's going to give me 41.67 kilowatts, right? So kilojoules per hour, we can convert into kilojoules per second. Okay, now this, this is a bit more, um, this is a bit more interesting for us. And what do we know? We know that the maximum possible, um, the, the, the highest possible efficiency we can have here is from the Carnot engine. Carnot engine is only dependent really on uh, these two guys here. It doesn't really ha generate any entropy, so it's amazing, but not really um, useful, right? So, and how what how do you calculate the maximum possible energy? Also, the maximum possible efficiency you can have on something like that is dependent only on the sink and the. So, actually, let me do this like the T cold and T hot, right? The temperature of the reservoir cold and hot. Remembering that this has to be in uh, Kelvin, right? And we know this before we did this before. And here it's the same kind of concept. That this is this is the um, the limiting factor here, right? So we are limited by not only the source that is supplying energy, but also limited by the one that is having to absorb 
the energy we're throwing at it. Okay, why is this important? Because note that if we um, had a source, Kelvin, Kelvin, if we had a source here that had a lower temperature, right, lower temperature, then we could send, um, we could change the number, the, the energy uh, rejected and increase the energy being, uh, I'll put it as wor useful work. So much so that if we had zero Kelvin there, we would be able to get a efficiency of 100, right? <clears throat> okay, but what does this math render? This math tells me that this is 80, 80.13. That's the maximum possible efficiency I can ever get from a, um, a uh, engine, heat engine, given these two conditions here, the hot reservoir and my dead state of 298, okay? So let's think about this in the real world scenario. Um, if we have, you know, a turbine that's taking energy from a uh, reservoir at 1500 Kelvin and it's outputting, it's, it's receiving 41.67 kilowatts and it's outputting on the other side um, uh, my fluid, whatever that is, whether it's uh, steam, water, I don't know, uh, steam or air, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's outputting that at 298. The maximum possible efficiency can have it's 80.13, is 80.13, right? And then <clears throat> if um, we want to know what is the maximum possible work out of this, well, that's easy, right? Because if we know that the work is just a matter of the amount of, or actually we should flip this first, right? We know the efficiency is another way of calculating is how much I get useful work out of how much I need to input, right? My in energy input, then that becomes obvious that, that if I want to find out the work, I just take the energy being inputted and I do. Okay, so if I want to find out what is work, I'm going to take the efficiency, multiply by how much I'm putting in. And in this case here, the maximum possible I could ever achieve is the 80.13%, and I'm multiplying that by the 40. 1.67 and then units have to be conserved so that's going to be in kilowatts so the maximum possible work I can take out of this is 33 33.4 okay so you uh, number wise and solving wise this is not hard right at all this is part a now let's understand what this means a bit if you recall the last problem we did on the um, isentropic turbine or turbine um, we had the fluid in the, that case steam being outputted at 69 degrees Celsius okay so if we go back to this little schematic here we'll note that we have you know we had a, a hot reservoir whatever that was and then we had the turbine that was all putting some work but then we could not reach all the way to 298 instead we were going outputting at 69 degrees Celsius Okay, which obviously is higher than the 20. Let's actually do it here so we can keep units consistent. We can actually do it here. So we had the 69 degrees Celsius. So know that what was happening, what was happening was this, right? This little circuit here. From the, the high reservoir, we had some energy being supplied. It was outputting some work, and it was sending the steam to, at 69. Why is that important? Because we were not outputting, rejecting heat to the 25. So that's this is a good example to understand exergy because... In that case, we were, um, let's say, not utilizing the full energy gap or the full energy potential between the source and the dead state, right? The dead state here. Okay, so if in that example, again, on the previous one that we did with the isentropic turbine, if that, in that case, we, uh, you know, the temperature of the day, temperature of the surroundings of the environment was 25 degrees Celsius, but our turbine was outputting the... Um, outputting the steam at 69, we were not outputting, our sink was not really the uh, the dead state environment, but rather was at 69 degrees Celsius temperature. So note how that there's a difference. So the, you know, we could talk about how our um, efficiency was, uh, the one that we calculated, I think it was 90% isentropic efficiency. It was a given efficiency, but <clears throat> if we were able, our exergy would be greater because our exergy is actually this, bar here, whereas the actual energy efficiency we got was this guy here. <clears throat> okay, so that's the idea behind exergy. All right, so that's part A of the problem. And in other words, we can say that this is, where is our, our work here? This guy here is actually the energy that we have available. Available, we have 33 point kilowatts of power 
available. And anything that is greater than the dead state, anything that's greater than the 298 is going to give me less um, power available for this heat engine. All right. So in other words, from the 41.67, right, from the 41.67 that is supplied from the 15,000, uh, 1500 kilo Kelvin source, only 33.4 kilowatts are available to be converted into work. All right. <clears throat> now, part B. Part B, what is the, um, if the engine has an efficiency of 50%, determine the second hand. Okay, so let's let's talk about part B. So part B is also interesting, because th this is saying, okay, my efficiency is actually 50%, okay? So this is saying, you know, the uh, output that I get, the, the work that I get, the work that I get divided by the amount of energy I'm putting in is 50%, right? So if I'm putting in, um, you know, 100 uh, joules, I'm outputting 50 joules. Right, and it's asking me. Okay, so under those conditions, what would be the second uh, law efficiency, given the same reservoir and the same source? Right. So no, no, this is an example, a great example of what we we're just talking just before, because now I have, we're saying that. Oh no, we've calculated this one to be the maximum one to be um, eighty percent. You can get, and what you're getting here is actually fifty percent. So the question is the second. Um, Second law of efficiency is asking you how much of the maximum you could get, how much of the 80% are you actually getting? And you, the answer is just a simple division, right? So if I want to know the second law of efficiency, I'm saying, okay, um, what did you actually get? Divide by, by what you could have got if you went all the way to the dead state. Could have. Gotten if dead state or environment. All right, so and that is super simple for us to calculate. And the idea here is more of the understanding than anything else. This is going to be my 50%, right, which is what I actually got given the um, problem statement, divided by the 80 point, what was it, 13? 13% that we could have gotten, right? Percentage, percentages, no worries there, unit-wise, and this turns out to be 62.3986, so let's go ahead and say this is 62.4%, okay, and that will be the answer here, all right, so out of the, you know, if I were to go all the way down to the dead state, I would be able to grab 80% um, efficiency out of this, but I'm not able to go to the dead state, instead I'm going elsewhere, and I'm getting an efficiency of 50%. So how much am I getting out of the total I could get? Oh, I'm getting 62.4%. All right, I hope this is um, clear and you understand the concept uh, well. Like I said, not supposed to be a complicated problem in terms of the math and the numbers we need to put in here. Um, it's more the understanding of the problem. So please, you know, go ahead and do it again. Um, try to do it from scratch, see if you understand the concepts. And as per usual, if you have any questions, just leave them down below in the comment section. If this video has helped you out, Consider giving it a like, and we'll talk soon.